It's time. Time to get credit for the work you've done. Time to get the recognition you deserve. With Purdue Global, you can move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself. You're worth the investment in yourself to earn a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will respect. Purdue's online university is designed to support working adults like you who know it's never too late to accomplish your goals. It's never too late to make a comeback. It's time to start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 73, Financial Independence Through Frugality. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Fire! 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 (laughs) Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. I'm Jill. And we have a hotly anticipated episode for you Mm. today. Hot off the press, hot off the fire. Hot. We are talking about financial independence, retire early movement, and frugality's integral role in it, and Mm. also some of our love-hate relationship with it. So Mm. you're going to want to listen to the whole episode because some of you are loving fire. Some of you have no clue what it is. They're, you're wondering why we're talking about natural disasters. Um, mm. But by the end, you're going to be able uh, to figure out whether this is the financial move for you. Good word, Jen. But first, our sponsors. Yes. Uh, today's episode is not brought to you by food. It's brought to you by presents. Mm. Not the kind you get for your birthday but the kind that allows you to fully embrace the right now. Experience it by taking a deep breath and thinking about one good thing that's happened to you today. Stressed out about tomorrow? Try being present. Worried about the unknown? Being present can help with that too. For all the things in life you can't control, forget about the what ifs and try being present. Whoa, yes. Jen, you took a hard turn from humorous fake sponsor into <laughs> remarkable life tips. Um, I mean, presence like just really wanted to sponsor the show. So how can right, you say sure. no? That's true. It has nothing to do with us just coming up with things right? on the fly. Just whoever's approached. giving us money at the time. We vet and then we uh, <laughs> decide who gets to be on the show. So and. <laughs> presence i mean how can you say no to being present you can't i I do like the people who like our fake sponsors and i'm concerned (laughs) for them for when we get real sponsors but so far so good we're over a year in and clearly we're not getting real sponsors so (laughs) i don't think we have much to worry about glad you all are still with us let's do this thing let's talk about fire yes jill what do you know or feel about fire Okay. It's pretty limited, although I don't, so I I am not an expert in this. I will say that, but I am, I have become more acquainted with this over the last year and a half. And what I know about it is it stands for something. We're not just talking about a blazing fire that you can roast your s'mores over. We are talking about financial independence, retire early. And I know that some people will identify with different parts of it. There's a big movement for financial independence, the FI part of the FIRE, and then the RE part is the retire early that some people may or may not get on board with. And there's a lot of different ways of looking at it, of what that means to retire early and what you do with your time. And so that's that's what it is. I know there's a lot of different opinions on it, and I'm really excited about talking with you on this, Jen. Mm -hmm. Yes. About the different perspectives and our perspectives. Yes. Um, I have been following the FIRE movement for about two years. So since we paid off our debt Mm. and um, at first 
I was like very gung ho. I mm-hmm. would say on fire, but I'm not that corny. <laughs> But, but I you know did that you guys it, were waiting so, for it. I'm sure yeah. that you were. So I want to point it out. Uh, and over the course of two years, I've kind of come to embrace more of a a frugal lifestyle that is not as how how do I put it gently? It's not as crazy. Uh, as, <laughs> <laughs> was so, that putting it gently, or was that giving up? I can't. That tell. was giving up. <laughs> that was giving up. Uh, that's not as uh, crazy as some people in the fire community can be. And Mm -hmm. I've seen people do it well that are very balanced and have a really great sense of self in this journey. And then I've seen people that are crazy. So I'm really excited to talk about these articles that we have that kind of got me introduced to fire and then help you figure out if it's a movement that you want to use your frugality to attain, Mm -hmm. because frugality is one of the essential pillars in becoming financially independent. And some would say it's more important than making money. I'll talk about my qualms with that later. I love that you described it as a pillar, how frugality is so necessary for this to even be possible, whether or not you graduate in the fire system or Mm -hmm. you just take components of it. But, and I also think I agree with part of the reason that I am not an expert and haven't explored this to its fullest potential is because I am still in the paying off debt stage. I think most people who are steeped in fire, (laughs) (laughs) I can't have so many jokes already paid down debt this Mm -hmm. is what comes next yeah so it can paying off debt can be a goal within the financial independence retiring early movement but you're not gonna go full force with it until you've taken care of that initial step so Mm -hmm. that's a big component here too yes side note i'm writing my next book it's out next month and it's about paying off debt and how to sustain the journey And it's also super relevant to sustaining a journey to financial independence. So I'll talk about that later, but I am so, so, so excited about it. Super Uh, stoked. Love your books. They're so easy to digest, have great tips in them. Looking forward to that. Yay. Okay, well, let's get started with our first article. So this is the article that literally started the FIRE movement. Um, It coined the term early retirement, Mm. and it's MrMoneyMustache.com, his article, The Shockingly Simple Math Behind Early Retirement. If you ask any like OG fire person what their favorite blog post is or what their favorite article is, like nine times out of 10, it's this article because it's really what started the movement. Mm -hmm. So Jill, after reading this, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's neat to hear background. I always like personal stories that go along with something, reasons behind why someone makes certain decisions. And we talk about that too, the why being so important. So I do like, I I never want to downplay what Mr. Money Mustache did for himself and the ways that it has worked for him. And and I, I also like how he just explains what it is and how this could be feasible and pushing back on some of the naysayers, which I think we see in our own frugality movement, Jen, for you and I of people pushing back on well, I need to buy that new thing or I can't because I'm single or I can't because I have kids or these different things. And part of that's true, but maybe it just looks different. And how Mm -hmm. can we get at this goal and yet have it be nuanced? So that part I I appreciate and just him explaining it. And so really talking about what it is. And the the second article talks about this too, but we can say it for, for now, even for those who are new to this concept. It's all about your savings rate ultimately, being able to become financially independent with the potential of retiring early is dependent upon how much you take home each year, the the money that you bring home and how much you can live on. And, And then beyond that, the amount of money that you're saving, being able to invest that is key to be able to grow this lump sum that could theoretically sustain you with what it earns in investments for the next 
30 plus years of life, depending on when you retire. So I appreciated that breakdown and some of the simple tenets of what this is and how to do it. Yeah. He gives uh, a lot of numbers, obviously in shockingly simple math, that can tell you if you were to increase your income by this much, decrease your living expenses by this much, and then invested the rest when you can retire. So he goes to networthify.com is the website he uses to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And so he's got a graph. If this person has a savings rate of 64%, then this person can retire in 10.9 years. So Mm -hmm. it really, it does have everything to do with how much you save and invest. Financial independence is defined as like once your annual investment growth is enough for you to live on, you are then financially independent. So I think a lot Mm -hmm. of people use like a million dollars is a cut and dry, easy number a lot of people use. And so once you hit a million dollars, then theoretically your million dollars should be growing by $40,000 every year. So you can either let that compound or you can plan on withdrawing $40,000 every year. Therefore, your nest egg never moves. It's always a million. But if you can get your living expenses down to $40,000 a year, you are by definition financially independent. So that is why frugality is such an integral part of financial independence. Because even if you had a million dollars and it was growing at 40000 you can't live off of, you know, if you're spending $60,000 a year, like you're, you're not financially independent yet, then you'd have to save so much more. Mm-hmm. And I like that Mr. Money Mustache says in the article, so the most important thing to note is that cutting your spending rate is much more powerful than increasing your income. Mm. The reason is that every permanent drop in your spending has a double effect. It increases the amount of money you have left over to save each month. And it permanently decreases the amount you'll need every month for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Which is our mantra in frugality, that it is better to cut your spending than to earn more money because there's always the potential of rising to meet that in your spending. Mm -hmm. And so better to practice the discipline of identifying what don't I need? Where can I cut expenses? But then it's for what purpose? And this is where I differ a little bit from the FIRE community in what my savings or decreased spending is for. Mm-hmm. And another whole, and I, I, this has been said, this is nothing new. I'm not bringing new perspective to, to this field, <laughs> but it's worth noting here that there are holes to be poked in this. Mm-hmm. Not that it can't be done, and, and I'm going to be a naysayer that nobody should ever go after this goal, but our lifestyle is not static. We can see that just by looking at our own lives over the last two to five years, it has not stayed the same. Expenses change, lifestyles change, uh, number of people in your household change, <laughs> the economy changes. It's, it's dynamic. We're yes. constantly changing. And so to say that, okay, if I have a million dollars saved and theoretically it's making $40,000 a year and I'm able right now to live off of $40,000 a year, well, to me, yeah, theoretically you're financially independent, but should you? Should you stop working and, and plan to do that? Assuming that now, because you're able to live at 40000 forever and always, you'll be able to live at 40000 That's not even talking about rate of inflation, which mm-hmm. is talked about in this realm. But to me, there there's a whole lot to look at here than just the basic tenants. Yeah. The math is a little off for me because... You can you can work in percentages, but everyone has a different percentage of or a different income. Mm -hmm. So he's working off a 50K take home pay, which is about seventy five thousand dollars of gross income. Mm -hmm. So not everybody is at that. And Mm -hmm. yes, that is the average for Americans. But it is really discouraging to see math like this if you're 
gross pay is fifty thousand dollars, then mm-hmm. you're taking home only seventy five percent of that, and that's so much less mm-hmm. to invest. And cutting expenses can only do so much. We've said mm-hmm. that over and over. It's mm-hmm. wise to do, and we support doing it, but there is only a certain limit, Mm -hmm. in which case a lot of people in the fire movement will compensate that by with entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But and in that case, you have to look at a lot of fire bloggers, including Mr. Money Mustache, who are now making so much money off of their blogs right. and their side ventures. They are not really retired, which I think they right. talk about. There are so many loopholes in this fire yeah. movement in that, yeah, it, it, you're, you, you're saying you're retired, but you're actually doing other things, which in some ways is providing you freedom to do what you want and you're enjoying it, but you're not fully actually not earning more money. Right. There are very few people that actually reach financial independence the traditional way and maintain it. There's mm-hmm. when I so when I was saying like having that million dollar investment, Mr. Money Mustache calls it the stash and then living off of 40,000, that's called the 4% rule. So mm-hmm. theoretically whatever your investment nest egg is, you can live off of 4% of it and the nest egg should be safe. Mm-hmm. If you want to not save a million dollars, if you want to save only, you know, 800,000, then you need to be able to live on 4% of that every year. Yeah. And I love what you were saying, Jill, about everything is so flux, like every year, every decade changes. And so you can't predict, you have to like factor in that maybe one year you can't spend 4% because the market's Mm -hmm. only allowing you to spend 2% without touching your nest egg. So Mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of holes to poke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm on board with how can we cut expenses? Mm -hmm. How can we save? How can we be wise with our money and be able to create freedom in our lives to do the work that we want to do, to not have to be living paycheck to paycheck? Like There are certain principles interwoven here that I am fully on board with and nuances that I would say, no. And that's that's the beautiful thing about this. Mm -hmm. We can pick and choose (laughs) that it doesn't have to be just like our initial when we put our toes into the water with Dave Ramsey's course, you can think, oh, I've got to follow this to the T. And then you can start to realize there's freedom here. Mm -hmm. I can kind of pick and choose and see what works for me and what doesn't. So similar thing with this. Yeah. That's why I loved our episode on front loading your life with Robert Farrington. Yeah. And being able to invest a lot up front and then not reaching financial independence officially But Mm -hmm. once you have that next egg that you create in your 20s and 30s and that money can grow over time, then you can take a job you love or stay home with your kids or do something that doesn't pay as well. And you're not investing as much, but you've already set a foundation that will just build over time. So you're not work, work, working until you hit that number and then you just, you know, drop off and retire. But you set yourself up early in life so that you can take it easy in the middle and then maybe transition to something different at the end. And you can have these different parts of your life. Like it doesn't have to be I'm working and then I'm retired. It's I'm working and then I'm like monetizing a hobby and then I'm doing this Mm -hmm. or that. It's a flip. Creating more freedom there. Yeah. And before before we get into the next article to really outline the ways that you can attain components of fire, I want to just make sure that we cover what is the extreme because the pendulum does swing mm-hmm. and we're always going to want to point towards the radical middle where that we're where we're not living in either extreme of something because that can be detrimental but the extreme of fire the reason that I'm a little hesitant to dive all in is because at the most at the furthest end of this it would be people who are heads down trying to make as much money as they can for as short amount of time as they can so it is a sacrifice in the immediate for 
you know, long term being able to live off of that. But it's a training self for always living very minimally, even though you are earning Mm -hmm. a lot of money, because the goal is to live off of a low amount of money so that you don't have to continue working in, you know, quote unquote, a dead end job or something you don't want to be doing for the rest of your life. And to me, the extreme of that is, It doesn't create a lifestyle that is able to be generous, to have wiggle room, and to be able to engage really in larger community than than that very extreme community. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's the one end of it. Certainly not everybody is there. Yeah, most people are not there. Yes. uh Uh-huh. Right. But even just this idea of a a real and genuine retirement, like what you would imagine at 65, 70, where you are not putting your hands to any plow and you are able to just veg out on a beach in Hawaii. Honestly, I have talked with people who this is the goal. So that's why I'm saying this is the extreme of Mm -hmm. I'm going to make as little amount of money so that I can genuinely retire at 35 and I'm going to live in Hawaii and live my dream only to find out out. I mean, mind you, they get two years into that and it's like, oh, uh, now I'm still only 37. What do I do? Like, we're not built for that. We're not built to not put our hands to something, which is why you see Mr. Money Mustache continuing to put his hands to something and other people in the fire community because it's not a real genuine retirement when we're still so young and we want to be purposeful with our lives. So I think that, yeah, some of the luster of what this might look like, I'm just going to veg out in Hawaii. Yeah, that only lasts for two weeks. And then you're like, mm-hmm. now what? Yeah. Which is why most people focus on the financial independence mm-hmm. aspect of it. But we will talk later in our lightning round about the extremity side. So I'm excited. Yeah. But some people can also rationalize not pursuing these pillars, which we will get to in our next next article. They rationalize not following these ideas because of the end of the spectrum idea. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to retire when I'm 35. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. So why would I even try and do these things? Which is also the wrong idea. These are all amazing ideas and Mm -hmm. you should do all of them, but not to the extent where you are living in the future and you forget about the present. Mm. Presents. It's all coming together. (laughs) I see, I see. Yes. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. 
So our next article is actually from a blog related to another podcast, our podcasting brothers, Choose FI, who don't know that there are brothers, but I just called them that. Um, it's We're the- their friends and they're our brothers. Yes. <laughs> Even though you they don't actually friends, know us. You can't choose your family. Yeah. I don't know how that fits in. But, <laughs> but it's um, the Beginner's Guide to Reaching Financial Independence. And I chose this one because I really learned about financial independence from the Choose FI podcast. We don't consider ourselves in the FIRE movement. We're not FIRE podcasters or bloggers. Like We're not in that sphere by choice. And so if you want an introduction to financial independence, this is your episode. If you want to dive deep, then Choose FI is your podcast. And it's an Mm -hmm. amazing, amazing show. So we just wanted to go through their summary of how to achieve financial independence. Mm -hmm. So first of all, as we mentioned in the last article, this is heavily dependent on your savings rate. And the FIRE community recommends saving 50% of your take-home pay rather than the traditional 15% that financial planners have recommended. This severely expedites your ability to live financially independent. Mm -hmm. And it's assuming, I mean, in the article, it says we don't want to work a job we don't love for 40 years. Like, So it's assuming you don't have a job that you love Mm -hmm. or the alternative is to just have a job that you love Mm -hmm. or or enjoy. And so the next one is lower your living expenses. And so we talked about in our housing episode a few weeks back about whether it's more frugal to buy or rent. And you can do either Mm -hmm. on the path to FI. Like they don't lean one way or the other. You can do whatever's most frugal for you. But Mm -hmm. your living expenses are the most are the highest expense you have every month. And so if you're going to lower something, choose the thing with the highest impact. We we say that all the time, too. So there's is a living expenses. And Mm -hmm. a few of the ways they recommend doing that or one of the ways is by house hacking. This would be purchasing a duplex or triplex or a four unit. Those are um, establishments you don't need commercial loans for. You can still get a traditional mortgage for anything for units or less. And living in one of the units and renting out the others. Mm -hmm. And in that case, the people renting from you pay your mortgage and you live for free. And that eliminates that expense for you, theoretically. There's also, Mm -hmm. you know, costs associated with the mortgage and the tenants and keeping up the property and all that stuff. But Mm -hmm. So that is the number one way to Mm -hmm. um, essentially eliminate the housing cost. Yep. And we've got episodes on house hacking. So if you're interested in more, even non-traditional housing and how that can help cut expenses, check that one out. We'll link it in our show notes. Mm -hmm. This article also says that you can work towards achieving a fire lifestyle by utilizing travel rewards. We also have an episode on this, but I I would 100% agree with this, that where you can take advantage of travel rewards, have a travel rewards credit card, this can help you in cutting your expenses where you would traditionally be spending a large sum of money on travel, whether that's just by vacation or visiting friends and family in different parts of the world or the states, having travel rewards can cut that expense. But an even greater perk could be that it could help you travel more at no extra cost or even less cost, Mm -hmm. depending on how much you are travel hacking. So 100%, we are hardly spending money on our three vacations this year just because of travel rewards. So I can say it works and it it's happening and I'm loving it. I'm smiling. Yes. So that's another great way of cutting expenses and, and saving money. Yeah. And if you're not into traveling, if you're not in that season of life where you can do that, putting your expenses on a cash back card and mm-hmm. uh, they have, you know, bonuses of two to five hundred dollars if you meet a minimum spend requirement. And then you can put, you know, that bonus towards more investing. So It's all about optimizing the way that you're spending. But obviously, if credit cards are your downfall, then don't use them at all. They're not worth it. Yeah. The next one is to eliminate debt. 
So that is a big way that most people find financial independence. It's how I found the concept. Mm -hmm. We were on this rapid momentum paying off our debt, rapid momentum saving our emergency fund. And then we were just supposed to kind of take a pause, almost it seemed, to invest and just pay off our mortgage. We could have done it rapidly, but we just didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. We looked at the numbers and we knew that the market was growing faster than our like mortgage, mm -hmm. uh, our mortgage interest. And so that's we decided to go for the investing portion. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, as soon as we started investing, the market took a year long plateau. Mm. So you cannot predict stuff like that. Yeah. You you can't. We were on the longest bull market in history, which is the longest trend up. And then as soon as we started investing, uh, mm -hmm. we just started plateauing. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got to be OK with that if you go down that route. So yeah. but in like eliminating debt, even if it's like lower interest student loan debt, it still takes a weight off of your shoulders and frees mm -hmm. you to live like a less stressful life. And so to me eliminating debt leads is financial independence. Like yeah. you've practically achieved it even just at that point. Yeah. Certainly you can go deeper and deeper down this rapid trail, but mm -hmm. eliminating debt, I would say is step number one. Yeah. Like when I lost my job, if I'd still had a $500 a month student loan oh, payment woof. at yeah. 30 weeks pregnant. Yeah. yeah. Woof. I, but we're debt free besides mm -hmm. our mortgage and mm -hmm. I didn't worry about it at all. Like mm -hmm. I felt bad for my coworkers that still had student loan payments yeah, and, and I didn't have to worry about it. And everyone felt yeah. bad for me because I was so pregnant and I was like, Man, I'm fine. I'm <laughs> You're just... literally enslaved to it. Yeah. I mean, that sounds extreme, but to me, that's what debt is. And as long as you are no longer enslaved to owing somebody money, that's freedom. Yeah. They, they say a few ways to cut expenses, like cutting cable, learning to cook. <laughs> checking your insurance costs and your other bills, buying used cars, all things that we have said before mm -hmm. throughout the other, mm -hmm. what, 70 episodes that we've had. So just go back into the archives if you want to find ways to save money to pay off debt. Yep. And investment philosophy. This is the next one that plays a, a big role mm -hmm. in fire. And so people in this community rec recommend specific types of investment, which is a broad-based, low-cost index fund. And we are speaking to you as friends. We're not financial advisors. We can't mm -hmm. like legally give you investment advice. So mm -hmm. this is all for fun and entertainment. Yes. And reviewing what this article says, not yes. what we are saying. So they compare Vanguard and Fidelity. You can check out. We are linking this article in our show notes. So if you want more information on these types of index funds and what the FIRE community is saying about the best types of investment, feel free to check that out. Yeah. We personally use, they recommend Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index Fund, the VTSAX. They love it. That is the one I personally have um, across all my investments. I have I have that one. And then they compare Vanguard and Fidelity. I also love Fidelity. If you mm -hmm. don't have a lot of money to start investing, Fidelity doesn't require a minimum mm -hmm. um, for some of its index funds. And it even has funds with uh, zero fees. So nice. Fidelity is great. Vanguard is great. You can't go wrong with either. But yeah, so... Low cost index fund investing is kind of like the gold standard when you're investing for financial independence, according to the FIRE movement. Mm -hmm. So and it's specifically that VTSAX because it's total stock market. So it's total equity, which means it's going to have higher highs and lower lows. But over time, it's going to theoretically grow more than a more conservative index fund that has all stocks and then maybe some bonds or other things. So, but you also can't go wrong with a target date fund. I know a lot mm -hmm. of 401ks have that one that put you automatically into one of those. Like, don't feel like that is dumb just because fire people are all about this one index fund. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're okay. 
Yeah, you're okay. Yeah. And then it says kind of where to put that fund. So I said I had VTSAX in across all my accounts. So that was across my in my 401k from my former employer. And so then I was easily able to just roll that over to a Vanguard traditional IRA. So that Mm -hmm. was super easy. I also have it in my Roth IRA. So you may Mm -hmm. not be able to choose that for your 401k. I was lucky enough to uh, have a 401k that had all Vanguard index funds, and you may not have that. Mm -hmm. So that's why Roth IRAs are so important because you choose whatever you want to put in it. You can put the best of the best in it. And Mm -hmm. the best of the best is whatever you decide is best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those, and then they also recommend real estate. So if you're, if you are at a financial place where you can max out your IRA and your 401k, that's kind of the time you could start thinking about real estate. Like you have to have a lot of liquid cash, I think, to start thinking about real estate. Um, And you really have to love it. (laughs) You really have to like real estate uh, to get into it. Uh, You can't just get into it because you think it's quick and easy money because it is absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And side hustles. We've talked about this one too. So this is another way to be able to increase what, if you've maxed out how much you can save and live off of to also consider side hustles for extra income and how much that can expedite the process for reaching savings goals. The side hustles are also fantastic when trying to pay down debt. They're just an awesome way to not feel capped at your earning level and be able to bring in some side cash each month. Yeah, it can also lower that amount coming back to the 4% rule it can lower that amount that you need to save to live off 4% of your mm-hmm. assets they go through the 4% rule a little bit more but i want to cap this one off with they end it with saying just get 1% better and i yeah. love this mm-hmm. idea and just mm-hmm. focus on what you can do this week to get 1% closer to your end goal and yeah. and that's really it like trying to do everything at once. Mm -hmm. That is me to a T. I try to do everything at once. I I jump headfirst into things (laughs) and it's exhausting and it can really burn you out. And so I have to constantly remind myself just to get 1% better. Yeah. Which can mean making your coffee at home rather than going through the drive-through line, packing your lunch, just 1% carpooling, making these small frugal adjustments because Mm -hmm. as you are good with little, you will be good with much. Yes. Preach. Preach. You know what else (laughs) we can preach? (laughs) The The bill of the week. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, this is Marin calling from Maryland. And my favorite Bill of the Week is my mortgage because that's our only debt left after paying off just over $78,000 in student loans and a car payment. So, yeah, very excited to only have that mortgage payment now as our only debt. And I love you guys and have been listening to you for a while now and think your advice is great and you're hilarious. So keep the awesome sponsors coming and keep up the good work. Thanks. Yes, Marin, that's so awesome. That's like exactly our story too. So it's like hearing myself call from Maryland. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. also, Marin from Maryland. I love I it. I also think we're awesome. So it's, uh, I resonate with your bill is what I'm saying. <laughs> Thanks for your kind words. It really struck me when you said you love us. I mean, I know that that's not like a... a an intense love like my husband loves me but I still feel it and I appreciate that does my husband love me intensely I don't know I don't know what that means he does but yeah he does so I appreciate (laughs) your encouraging words along with your your bill of only having your mortgage left because 
I'm celebrating with you, but you also went above and beyond an encouragement. You didn't have to, but I appreciate it. But you did. And the transcription, when you said awesome sponsors, transcribed as awesome monsters. And I was looking forward to seeing what you really said. And I hoped it was awesome monsters. Um, (laughs) But sponsors is good, too. So if you have a bill of the week out there and you want to see what fun ways Google transcribes your bill, submit it to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. And you don't have to butter us up, but we'll take it. Yeah. You know, we'll sit here and take it. Yeah, we'll sit here and take it. <laughs> it's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family and for yourself, with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late. Never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles and Toyota has them. With more on the way, but we also know a BEV is not for everyone. Whether it's because of cost, range, or concerns about finding a charging station when you need it. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon neutral future. In vehicles and manufacturing plants too, in the years ahead. The materials used to make just one long range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug-in hybrids or 90 gas electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid, plug-in hybrid or battery EV. So shop, learn more and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. Well, you know what that leads to. The lightning round. (laughs) I think I'm getting better at that. My voice is training for intensity. Yes, you are growing. (laughs) I could probably be a spinning instructor next. (laughs) I believe it. (laughs) Spinning is rough on the butt. (laughs) Spinning is rough on the emotions. So I hear. Oh, yeah, it's that too. So for our lightning round, we actually got this inspiration from another article, and it is from financialsamurai.com. So Sam, who writes this blog, was one of the um, first early retirees, along with Mr. Money Mustache, and he did it the extreme way. So he Mm -hmm. retired at 34. He made six figures in his working career. Um, And he retired in 2012 at 34 and had this fully, fully funded nest egg, lived off a 4% rule and um, didn't monetize his blog much. So he wasn't using that as as income. So he did it the way people say it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. So he wrote this article of reflection Mm -hmm. and really had some things that he would have done differently. And so, and he had five questions to ask yourself whether you should pursue FI or how aggressively you should pursue FI. Like ask yourself these questions Mm -hmm. to really get in touch with it. Yeah. I so appreciated this perspective and I think vulnerable and counter what the FIRE community might say sometimes you might be able to attain by having this as your goal. So Mm -hmm. really interesting to see his perspective. He definitely would not do it all the same. There's quite a bit that he would change about the way that he approached this. So 
feel free to check out that article. I think it's really insightful. But one of the questions that he lists to be asking yourself on whether to fire or not to fire Mm -hmm. is why am I rushing to retire early? Am I running away from something? And so to me, this speaks a lot to this concept that I don't want to work a dead end job, something that I'm miserable with constantly going to the nine to five grind. Well, that's assuming that everybody is in that position and we wouldn't encourage anybody to stay in that place regardless of whether or not you're trying to reach fire or not. Mm -hmm. Like there is definitely freedom, particularly if you've already attained debt freedom to be able to explore new fields and to change fields. It doesn't mean that because you don't like your job, now you've got to retire. Mm -hmm. Why not switch jobs? So, and, and not being afraid of work. I mean, For those who retire later in life, there's a lot of boredom that comes with that. And what am I going to do now? And so much of my identity is wrapped, all of our identities are wrapped up in what we spend the majority of our time doing. So yeah. consider that and what, what's the alternative? What's the opportunity cost here of no longer working? And, and are you running away from something? You know, Sam retired at 34. And now he's 42 and he even states he regrets not working for one more year. I mean, certainly that could be how many one more years are there, (laughs) but yeah, yeah, that it's not, it's not a bad thing to put our hands to something to be fruitful and productive. So consider what is the rush? What am I trying to attain? Mm -hmm. Um, His next question is how will retiring early change my life for better or worse? Um, and I I would add, like, am I sacrificing too much to retire early? Mm. I think that's his fifth question that I kind of combined with that. But just coming back to don't live in the future, like live in the present. Don't sacrifice the things that could be making your life full now mm-hmm. for, you know, a quote unquote full life later. Like Mm -hmm. he gives the example, like he waited to have kids with his wife until after they were fully fire Mm -hmm. and she was 34. It took them three years to have their son because biology doesn't improve as you get older. So that was his example, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily have to be yours. Like sometimes Mm -hmm. I think like I would rather have the one latte now and enjoy my time now Mm -hmm. than be able to quit a few days early from the job and have two lattes Mm -hmm. later, just sit around and drink lattes all day. You know, I'd Uh I'd rather work the job and have the latte. And what are you sacrificing? You know, you're pinching pennies now, but to be, to be able to pinch pennies the rest of your life, that's what the ultimate, if you are following this to the T of always and forever needing to live off of $40,000, how much freedom is that to have to live very, very, inexpensively for the rest of life. Yeah. And what that trains you for that in my perspective, that trains you that you don't have money to spare. Your generosity is definitely going to decrease because you can't, you can't be giving money away when your goal is to be living off of all the money that you've stacked away for the Mm -hmm. first you know, 15 years being in a career. So there are a lot of other things to to be considering just regarding morality and personal life goals as a part of this. Mm -hmm. The other question that this article puts forward is what will I do after I retire early? Am I running towards something? And this is the why question too of What is it that I'm hoping to be doing in retirement? Is it just sit on a beach in Hawaii or is it so that I can choose to put my hands to the the things that I really want to be doing? And could you be doing those things now, even while you are working a traditional nine to five job? Could you be starting your side hustles or the things that are interesting to you that could potentially grow into something bigger? Mm -hmm. The last question, which I think goes highly overlooked is have I gained enough perspective from those who've already retired Ooh, that's a and I one. think a lot of people in the fire movement get their perspective uh, from two to four people mm. that have retired and they don't examine the experiences um, of a broad range of retired mm. early retirees mm-hmm. um, and so and that's it, 
getting better now, um, especially with the Choose If I podcast. They interview a lot of people who have retired early, but a lot of their interviews are people still pursuing FI. So Mm -hmm. I think it's always wise to survey a broader audience Mm. to get a lot of different stories and perspectives. Yeah, I love that because we can imagine and fantasize and glamorize something all we want until we are in it and realizing the reality of it. So that's not to say don't try it, but recognize that what you have as idealistic may not be reality. Yeah. And I wanted to just leave off with just one quote from this article that I thought mm. was was really, really good. And, it, and he says, why is it that when we're younger, we always seem to feel like we're in a rush to get things done? We've got to retire as early as possible or else. Maybe it's because we lack patience and feel that we might all die an early death. I certainly Mm. feel like retiring early was a hedge against an untimely demise. And so I think one of the things that has driven of the fire movement is fear of wasting your life Mm -hmm. and fear of an early death or fear of missing time with loved ones. You know, Mm -hmm. people retire at 60 or 70 and they've they've missed their healthiest Mm -hmm. years of life. They retire in their unhealthiest years. Mm -hmm. And so there's this fear. But I would just challenge that with, there's a fear of of missing this season and fully living in it, even with a job, even yeah. with working. Yeah. So yeah. early retirement isn't the solution to living a full life in the fear of death. Like yeah. balance is. Making decisions out of fear is never a good idea. Fear clouds perspective. So we will not see rightly if that is the motive behind some of this. Mm-hmm. Fantastic quote. Yes. Yeah. And also just even considering opportunity cost in here of even if you have saved a ton of money, you are turning down whatever you were making. You know, let's say you were making $80,000 a year to suddenly step away from that and retire early. You are now turning essentially that down for consecutive Mm -hmm. years too. And what that could have meant for lifestyle for community for yeah fill in the blank so that's another thing to consider here too is the the opportunity cost of the earnings you could have had if you hadn't have pursued early retirement for sure in conclusion we love the tenants of fire but we modify it Mm -hmm. we modify it for our lives Mm-hmm. Everybody's got to identify their own why and and get there. Some people aren't as concerned with generosity or being present in the moment now as, as I may be. That's mm-hmm. my goal and purpose is to be able to live frugally to, yes, save some money, but also be able to give where there's need in time, energy, resources, all of that. So then I recognize that's not everybody's thing. So yeah. have at it if Hawaii literally will be your best life now. Do it. (laughs) I heard it's great. Yeah. Well, if you want more, more engagement on this topic and others like minimalism, we are having our book club this month, like all the other months. And we are reading The Minimalist Home by Joshua Becker. So we've read other books of his. This is his newest one. And Super excited to look at what he has to say on this topic. So check it out. And we are giving away uh, free copies of The Minimalist Home. You can enter to win one by leaving us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, screenshotting the review and sending it to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And we will select one winner for every five reviews at the end of the month. Oh, and look at this. We just happened to find a, a helpful review, some fantastic literary work over here by Kentucky Twin Mama, Yay! who says, great tips accompanied by five stars. I enjoy this podcast more and more as time goes on. I especially enjoyed the episodes about college savings plans and raising kids frugally with Mrs. Frugal Woods. I look forward to listening to this podcast every week. Keep up the good work. Yes. Thanks, Kentucky Twin Mama. Yes. And be on the lookout because we will have an episode coming up about how to teach kids about living frugally and how to make that mm. exciting for them. And we have a really great guest for that. So that is coming up by the end of the year. And uh, you'll want to stay subscribed 
stick with us every Friday and we will be in your stereo, in your earbuds, everywhere you take us. We will see you next week. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Suriano. Because we do keep getting better. Like a fine wine. Fine wine. You keep you keep giving us time, we keep getting sweeter. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not sweeter, but more complex. More complex. For sure. Better at talking, maybe? Better at talking. <laughs> I talk better for sure now than I did when we started. I, I mean, say less ums. Episode 73 has got to be better than episode one, even though episode one is apparently what everybody wants to listen yep. to. That is our number one most listened to episode. We should we should redo that. Like not re- not replace it, but kind of like revisit Frugality Ooh, 101 and see if anything's Frugality changed. Frugality 102? Is that yeah. what comes after 101? <laughs> 201? I don't know. School. It depends on if we're doing real counting or if we're doing college counting. What? Uh, that would be 102. Yeah. Right. I, they do still do 102, but then generally then they'll just skip to okay, 200. Okay, so I'm thinking college. So it'd be 201. Okay. Yeah, we should definitely do that because... <laughs> That's the, I don't know why that is the most downloaded episode, but by far. I mean, I would probably listen one. to it. Is like where'd they get started and what do they have to say about fruit like what is frugality one oh one? What are the what are the main things I need to know? I don't think we did a terrible job, but I yeah. also haven't listened we, to it in a while, so I don't right? know. Right. <laughs> but we recorded didn't we record a few episodes? Yeah, we recorded before that episode. I think we never used it. We had to re-record that episode. Yeah. Didn't uh-huh. we? And yeah. so we got the kinks out. Yeah. So that it was good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and that's probably the Not secret to much. podcasting. Or okay. Yeah. yeah that right. Too. <laughs> is record your first episode twice. And that way it doesn't yeah. suck so much. Yeah. Know that everyone's gonna constantly revisit your first episode. Yep. There's there you go. There's the secret to podcasting. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be... A- an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.